Welcome to another state of the machine learning video. I hope you're as excited as I am because even though we're just a teensy bit late, Feb 22 was a pretty crazy year for machine learning even though the video uh, even though the month itself is really really tiny. As al so we'll be going over that and as always the links you can use to reach out to me will be in the description below along with the slide deck if you would like to download this for your own reference later. Here are the following things we'll be covering in this video. AlphaCode, which was Google's, uh, I think it was Google's, yeah, attempt at um, cracking competitive programming through AI. It actually had some pretty insane results and I'm pretty excited to talk about it just because it showed us both what AI is capable of and also how we can effectively use humans and AI in conjunction with each other. Following along this vein, we have OpenAI's Math Solver, which is another great paper similar kind of a story we have there where they're doing some pretty insane work it's pretty scary what ai is capable of doing now especially if you've been following ai from 2017 like i have just to see all the progress that's being made with such intensity but also showing you where ai has pot potentially got pitfalls right now and how we could possibly improve in the future with different ideas to focus on then we'll be talking about Eleuther AI, a pretty cool uh, project that I, I, really, I really, really like because of what they stand for, what they represent, and what the progress they've been able to make so far, which is quite gratifying as somebody who's been pushing for open and open source machine learning for a while. R5, which makes nerds like me very, very happy. And I'm sure if you're watching, this will make you very happy too. The Geneva project, which to me is probably the most impactful implication and usage of AI I've seen and their work they've done, the results they've been able to achieve, they're all just so great. Whoever's working on this is a badass and they have my utmost respect. We'll be talking about all of these. As always, the timestamps will, will be in the video description, description if you want to jump around into one particular topic. So what, first, let's talk about AlphaCode. DeepMind once again decided to really change things up and show us what's possible. and they have gone on to automate and replace humans. So AlphaCode was uh, tested in the 54th percentile on one of the coding, I think on multiple different uh, coding uh, the challenges from code forces, which by itself is really great because remember the people who do competitive programming are already probably more likely to be better than average. So like, the fact that they can place in the mid tier on multiple different um, competitions while keeping in mind this slight sample selection bias is probably a great hint at how good it is at solving competitive programming questions. And obviously this is really, really cool because like if you compare this to GitHub Copilot or other such tools, GitHub Copilot, a lot of it is just solving problems that's already been seen through GitHub, etc. With competitive coding, you get problem statements that are completely new. And that is pretty cool in a nutshell, uh, to see that it's able to parse the problem statement for relevant information and come up with good programming, uh, come up with the right code for it. So obviously this means humans are redundant and we don't need anything else. If you understand the GIF I have on the left, right, and you know everything I've been saying, if you're following my content for a while, you'll know that obviously that's not true. Really what's happened is that what they found that this uh, deep uh, alpha code could do is that it could create like 10, 20,000 different code bases and it would just traverse through them so fast. So what they, di what they didn't, what they have created is not really the code solver itself. What's impressive is the quickness with which it can search through different solutions and it can cut down on the solution space. And that's really what we should be keeping an eye on, how, how we can use AI to cut down solution space, cut down different topics, different ideas. And that's something that a lot of people have done in different fields. And that's all been really, really cool. If you want to keep up with all that, make sure you're subscribed here because I'll go over all of these in the detail. But that's about it. To explain the GIF to you guys to that don't get it, this is a reference to the infinite monkey theorem, which is a theorem in computer science that states that if, a pers if you give a monkey an infinite lifespan and it kept typing at a typewriter, eventually it would type out every possible text, including like Hamlet. So same story here, it's just creating all these different kinds of code and permuting through it really fast, which is not how humans do it, which is not how we typically think of problem solving. But the way it's able to run through the solutions itself is quite impressive and something that we should keep a lookout for in the future and subscribe to make sure you have done so. Now let's talk about another 
field of people being replaced, this time with mathematicians. Looks like AI is just out to replace me if it's going after both programmers and mathematicians, because that is my field. So, so far we've thought that we can't really have AI use mathematical proofs, uh, solve mathematical proofs, since uh, technically there is an infinite action space, there's an infinite number of things you could do at any given state. And, you know, especially when we take a look at where this problem is from, this is from the AMC, which is not like a scrub co math competition. It's a pretty well-respected advanced math competition in the United States of America. So the fact that AI can go around solving proofs in the AMC is quite a big deal. It's quite impressive to see what they've done and definitely something that you should keep an eye out for. What I really find impressive is this AI was able to read the question and directly infer that this was a principle of mathematical induction problem and able to solve it. If you don't know what that is, make sure you check out one of the other videos on YouTube. Maybe some guy like Wrath of Math, who's really, really exceptional at teaching all this, would be a good resource for you. Uh, but make sure you know that because PMI is very, very important for a lot of theoretical computer science concepts. And also, if you have uh, been enjoying this video so far, make sure you hit the like button so that we can reach out to more people and more people can appreciate how cool AI is and how well I explain things. So now, now that that's covered, I'm just going to wrap this topic up. So essentially why this is really important is because uh, r remember how we talked about how AI can be used to uh, cut down search space in the last question, in the last po um, when talking about alpha code. So far in math proofs, that's what AI has been done for, where we use AI to just solve certain math proofs or like help us find which direction we should aim towards. So the fact that AI can actually go end to end from question, problem statement to solution is really cool. I think this is, this has a lot of possible application and concepts where I'm tr I'm trying to solve a very big theorem, and each of these theorems have very small color, uh, you know, these small little mini theorems inside them, like things you have to prove here and there, statements you have to make up. I think the color release or something. Uh, make sure you comment down the word so I can learn it. In that case, you can use an AI like this to solve, help solve those mini proofs, which can be formulated strongly with the correct, um, you know, g domain space output and what's expected, which is much, much easier than solving a much bigger and ambiguous problem. So that's a pretty cool application. I can see it being useful there. And that's definitely something you should keep an eye on. Next, let's talk about Eleuther AI. This is a project that's uh, very, this is a group that's dedicated to open source uh, machine learning. If you've read my articles, I've talked a lot about this. I've, I've kind of been beating on this for a while now, but a lot of machine learning, the problem with it is it's too closed off. The peer review system is too, um, it's too random, it's too erratic, it's not open enough. And when it comes to things like Facebook, uh, Google, all these big tech companies, they have a lot, of, uh, there is this replication crisis going on because they can create, in a sense, these huge data sets and they can train their models on them. And somebody like me with my home computer can't really test out, what they, validate their findings because I don't have a test model. I can't afford the computation power they use. So the fact that uh, there's initiatives that are trying to do this is pretty cool. And the fact that they were able to open source a 20 billion parameter model is quite impressive. Make sure, you're, make sure you check out this project, give them some love, keep, an, keep updated on them, because if you're somebody like me into machine learning, if you're going to be somebody using it very regularly, being able to see which of these massive language models that you could use in your projects will definitely be very helpful to you. Moving on to another pretty cool project. This is something that uh, I really, really like. So if you're familiar with any research domain, especially in the STEM fields, Archive is a website which a lot of, where a lot of these papers are published online for general public like you and I to read without having to pay these massive publications, a lot of money. So, and because it's such an important field, because so many people use it, there's always people trying to make m modifications to Archive make their own um, ver better versions of archive, I guess, where they take archive papers and then they try to change it in some way to make it easier to keep up with. There's Archive Sanity, which is the big one, which helps you keep track and find what you're looking for better. But, uh, and R5 is the newest advancement in such a field. So instead of uh, looking at things as a, just a, a boring PDF docs, R5 makes them into HTML5 web pages, which makes the text much easier to interact with 
it makes it much prettier, uh, much easier to read. There's just so many benefits to it. When I, I looked at a few papers on it and it was great. It's not a live demo, unfortunately, but I hope that uh, the people at Archive try, try to integrate this project or work with the project owners pretty soon because this is very, very cool and will help a lot of people getting into machine learning and even more experienced people like me who will have to read a lot of papers to keep up. Lastly, uh, as I mentioned, this is probably the coolest thing and the thing I'm most excited to talk about. I've been talking to their, um, the founders of this project personally on Twitter and it's been pretty amazing. By the way, make sure you're f following me on Twitter to stay updated because I share a lot of content by other people that I find interesting there. So, uh, Geneva project was basically created by researchers in University of Maryland and it, it's super, super duper cool because what it's able to do is it's able to beat state censorship using genetic algorithms. I have been talking about this for a while. I have an article on it, in fact, much before even this, pro this project or this thing was really widespread called uh, why you should be using evolutionary algorithms. And I talk about how they can traverse search spaces that are discrete and not uh, differentiable much better than traditional machine learning can. And the, uh, the authors actually talk about this pretty explicitly where they talk about how they can't use machine learning, traditional machine learning for their input because it can be pass fail, it can be what is the thing you're getting back. So there is no gradient to compute. Uh, the Geneva project has been super successful. They've been able to beat state censorship from states like China, North Korea, Iran, India. And they were able to actually, what's really amazing about this project is because of the way they designed it, they're able to get uh, information like if they're if they can't bypass a sensor they're able to get information about that sensor that's helpful and if they do bypass it they also get information about it that's helpful and this has given them and they've really progressed understanding of how states employ massive censorship regimes all over the world and for a free and better internet this is a must for anybody and i actually have a whole article breaking down this paper where how you can reach out to these people and more about this on medium called project geneva state censorship by beat by genetic algorithms that I will link in the description and in the comments below. Make sure you check it out because this is probably one of the most impactful usages of AI you can get. That's about it for this video. I really appreciate you watching. Let me know what you thought and how you uh, felt about this video. I'm always trying to improve. And because of that, I've also created a Google Forms. Uh, it's completely anonymous, obviously. Make sure you fill it out so that I can get an understanding of, hey, uh, what can I do better? What can I do worse? Who you are, an understanding of my audience, etc. Make sure you fill it out. It'll take you less than three minutes and it'll help us both out a lot. And ob obviously, if you want exclusive content, you want annotated papers, you want consultations with me, etc. Make sure you check out and patron uh, become a patron on one of these links, either through Venmo or PayPal. It's uh, not a lot of money and it can get you a lot of benefits, which is pretty cool. So make sure you check those out and reach out to me if you're interested. And as always, uh, these are my social media links. You can reach out to me. My articles will be on Medium. My YouTube is obviously, make sure you subscribe to that to keep stay updated with machine learning. You can reach out to me on LinkedIn, Instagram, or Twitter. Uh, they're all good to reach out to me. Make sure you're connected with me on all three because all three have different benefits. We can, we, I share different kinds of things on them. So make sure you're connected with me there. And if you're into machine learning, if you're into tech, you definitely need to be very good at coding and you need to pass the coding interview side of things. You need to build up your knowledge there. So make sure you check out my uh, daily newsletter called Coding Interviews Made Simple. I go over a lot of different topics there from math to problem solving to, prob to different techniques and how you can break different problems down. So it's definitely gonna be very helpful to you. Thanks for watching, that's it, peace.